What's going on guys? Chaos here, bringing you guys another video. And today I bring you guys a video I've probably been working on for about at least a week. It's my top five video of what I think needs to be fixed going into Madden 20. So I, there was a lot of issues with this game. Nobody will, nobody will argue with that. It wasn't as bad as people say, I don't think, but it also, it wasn't great either. There was definitely some things that needed to be worked on. And I narrowed my list down to five with my five main things where I felt like they need to be fixed. Otherwise, it's going to be really bad for the game. Now, I think I did a pretty good job, but maybe you guys disagree with me. So if you guys don't don't think that I'm right, go ahead and comment below, man. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Let me know what your guys' top five is that needs to be fixed going into Madden 19 or Madden 20, excuse me. And don't just tell me uh, defense, offense. Be specific with it. I try to be as specific as possible, so I think that's gonna be pretty good. Now, I'm ready to jump in my list, but if you guys don't already, make sure you guys hit that subscriber button, make sure you guys never miss a video, and make sure you guys hit the notification button because you guys never know what you might miss. It might be something really important. It might be really helpful for you guys. And if you guys also enjoy the video, eh, why not hit a like for me? I appreciate y'all. Let's get into this video. Number five, crossers and deep corners. Okay, so for number five, guys, our first one, we have deep corners and we have crossers. Now, something I complained about all year was the fact that you can't really guard these with one single route, meaning that a deep quarter will play a deep corner or a crosser. But if there's a fade there pushing it back, nothing, that won't guard it. A cloud can sometimes play it, maybe at least play it for a little while, but if you have something underneath it, it's going to come right down. It's going to leave the crosser and the deep corner route wide open. So I think something that they could add for Madden 20 would just be something that a zone where it's only going to play the crosser and deep corner. If there's something underneath it, it's not going to come down and it's not going to get pushed back by the deep quarter. So I think that's something that they could add if they did that. I think that would be great. There are other ways that you can guard it, obviously, cross man, do different things, match. But I think if they had a specific zone for it, it'd be great. So that's it for number five. Number four, ID the mic and blocking. Okay, guys, so for number four, we have blitzing and ID in the mic. There's a few, few clips from practice mode where I ID the mic and the guy still comes in free. As you guys know, in-game, when you guys are playing online, that's where you guys really see the blitzing and the and the crazy just amount of guys that come through and just the, the struggle that it is for picking up stuff. It got better as the year went on, I felt like, but it's still really inconsistent for where picking things up. If you ID the mic on a certain person, that one guy should never come in. Now, someone else might come free. The blitz might be bluffed, so like it'll confuse the running back if someone else will come free, something like that. I'm cool with that, but I think if you ID the certain person, that person should never be able to come in. And if you have six versus six or seven versus seven and you're IDing the right person, you should be able to pick it up. But that's it for number four. Number three, playbooks. Okay, guys, so we have playbooks at number three. I debated moving this up even to number one. Three through one were so close. They're all so important. I just feel like the ones that I ended up putting at two and one are just a little bit more important, but... It was very, very close. So this is something I was complaining about all the way from the beta all the way through the end of this year. It's playbooks not getting updated, playbooks having the same plays over and over, all the same formations. We see all the time, bunch, trips, tight end. We don't see much, guys. There's not much diversity. So people complain about it, and it looks like they're answering for us. First and foremost, they're adding run pass options. I think this is going to be great addition. I think it's going to be useful. Hopefully, they put some good route combos with it. Because being able to do that with the read option, which the read option is actually an underutilized run in the game itself. So I think it's going to be really good for the game to add those in. Next, they said down here they have brand new jet sweep touch passes. Not exactly sure what that's going to be. Is that like a wide receiver pass? I don't know. I don't know, to be honest with you. I'm not a football guy. Maybe I'm confused on that. However, it says that they're going to be getting a big overhaul and teams are going to get more team-specific plays, which means it's not just going to be the same trips tight end from this one to this one to this one to this one it's not going to be all the same stuff guys it's going to change up hopefully that's what that means that's how i'm going to read it that's how i'm going to interpret it and that's going to be great and lastly they have the ability to update playbooks i know that technology was in the game this year but i feel like they put it in the put in the technology for it but they didn't have the things to put into the game i think they just created the technology now they're after a year of stuff they're going to be able to be they're going to have things that you're going to actually be able to put in they have the update ability now they're going to have things that they can actually update with it. So I think it's going to be all positive, man. I really think they can pull this off. And I really think playbooks are going to be a great fix for next year. Number two, contains. Okay, boys. So coming in hot at number two is contains. I was this close to putting in number one. Number one was just that bad of a deal that it had to go to number two for me. But it was something that contains just, they were, they were really good at the beginning of the year. They came off the edge really fast at you, 
And I think a lot of lower caliber players didn't like that. And with that, they complained about it. And they, they put out their fix. Their fix was really just to make them stand there. And what that fix created was really just, you can't have him on your field. A top player was never, ever, ever going to have a contain on their field. They just weren't because it was just that bad. They didn't rush the quarterback. So the problem with it is, and you need to find a happy medium. That's what the problem was. They need to find a happy medium. I really think that they can do that in, in Madden 20. It just let guys like Vic and Lamar just get loose because you couldn't have a contain on the field. And without the contain, those guys were free to do whatever they wanted. So I hope that they can make that fix. I really believe that they can. And with that, let's go into our number one, guys. The number one is the craziest of them all, and it's even worse than the contains. Number one, ag catches and high ball. All right, guys, I'm sure you guys all guessed it. Number one, ag catches. I'm going to show you guys a bunch of different clips. I got clips that were sent in to me on Twitter. I got clips from the MCS games. Now, not all of these are the worst ags ever. Some of them are pretty bad. Some of them are just like one-on-ones. But the fact of the matter is, the reason why I wanted to include the one-on-ones was because this year, an ag catch was an automatic one-on-one -on -one catch. That was the problem. If you had a one-on-one, -on -one, you should highball it, and you should catch it. If you dropped it, you could argue that you got cheated. That's how bad it got this year with the ag catching. And that the problem with that is, man, you can't have one-on-one -on -one catches literally being made every time. And if you want to argue, oh, it's a great receiver, okay, fine. Well, if it's a great cornerback, then they should be able to knock it out. And I just felt like there was no balance between that. If you had a great corner, they were still going to get agged by great receivers. And I included that one right there because it was three-on-one. Even though it was out of bounds, I had to include it because he still caught it. But really, this was the main gripe all year. For me personally, I thought it was the worst. And I really just thought it got a little bit out of control. It wasn't too bad before the spec catch started getting too high, but with Mutt, those players keep getting better and better. And with that, the ag catch just got worse and worse. And this had to be number one because it's been a gripe since Madden 16. It's not the first year that it's been a gripe. It's been there for three years, so it had to be number one for me. And I really hope that they're going to fix it. But with that, boys, it's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and be on the lookout because next video or not next video but soon in the future i'm going to be putting out how to prepare for madden 20 what are the things you need to do in order to be ready before the game comes out but i hope you guys enjoy it take it easy peace